Greetings, knowledge seekers! Mainly Facts is ready to roll with today's discoveries. Fasten your seatbelts and let's jump into the heart of the action. Story 1. Am I the a-hole because I refuse to get my boss lunch anymore? I, female 33, have had a job with the same company for almost 12 years. I was originally hired to come in and help around the office that my mom works at, then after the second week I was given a computer. A month later, I was offered a salaried position. For the past 12 years, I have done all sorts of jobs for this company. Billing until someone else was hired to do that, marketing until they got someone else to take over that for me, along with accounts payable, receivable jobs, DOT fleet management, setting up pricing for all our products across all five branches, etc. Our receptionist retired last year, and we got someone else to cover her job. However, this employee is a reservist, we will call her M, a 45 female, and she was called to serve earlier this year. For the weeks she was deployed, we hired another lady to come in, we'll call her R, 54 female. When M returned to the office, the VP decided that he didn't want her to be a receptionist anymore, that she would go into sales. Then R would no longer be a receptionist either, but move into my position while I would now be a receptionist. I was very upset by the whole prospect and tried to talk to my boss. He told me that this was the VP's call and the VP thought this would be best for the office to just hold out until he figured out it was a bad idea. So while I have to essentially take a demotion and two women who have worked less than a year get a promotion, he told me to just wait it out. R and I were told to write down every job that we did and then train the other how to do things. However, I've been with the company for 12 years and since I already knew how to do everything, I spent the next three weeks training R to do my job. However, since some of the training has ended, we have been having a lot of issues with R. She has a hard time keeping up with the pricing like I did, so she is constantly trying to get me to do that for her. When my coworkers go to her to ask for assistance on something, she makes a huge deal about having to add something else to her list of duties, when most of the time this task takes 10 minutes out of the whole year, because again, it's just assisting someone, not a new task for her to do. It has gotten to the point where no one asks her to do anything because she just reaches out to the VP and asks if she has to. When I started working here, I was 21, so when someone needed to go to the post office, I did. When someone needed to get lunch for the office because a customer was coming in, I did. When it's someone's birthday and a cake or cookie needs to be ordered, I did. I was starting to get annoyed by always being the gopher of the office, but I was 20 years younger than everyone else and the newest employee at the time. I figured I was paying my dues. However, I've now been here for 12 years. I'm not in my 20s anymore, and there have been many new hires. My dues are effing paid. Every day, I run out to get lunch for myself and my mom. I used to get, have to get lunch for my boss when he came into the office, but since I've moved to reception, I haven't. All of my jobs have been transferred to R. Shouldn't she have to do the errands for the company now? But every day, my boss still asks me to get his lunch while R is just sitting there. R didn't even order anything for his birthday, 10-2, and I had to race to a local bakery to find cookies before he came into the office. When I mentioned this to R, she said that she thought it was something I enjoyed, so she just figured I would keep doing it. Today, I ran out to get my lunch, my mom had brought her own, and when I got back, M came to me trying to say that I should have asked my boss if he wanted something. I told her no, that if he wants something, he can ask R because that is her job now. M said that I was being petty and should just go get his lunch since I always have. I think that R should be made to do her job. So, am I the a-hole? Not only are you not an a-hole, but I don't think you realize the kind of value you have as an employee. To be unceremoniously demoted so these newer people can suddenly take over your jobs and you're stuck doing something that you absolutely shouldn't be stuck doing is kind of ridiculous. You clearly have developed an amazing skill set that is not being utilized, and frankly, uh, it, it's offensive. Like, what you should do is put all those skill sets onto a resume and look for a new job. I know it's not the easiest thing, but you have some really marketable skills that your company clearly doesn't value, and they're not treating you appropriately. You can get out there, and I promise, when you find a new job or get a better job offer, then you can go to the VP or whomever and be like, Oh, by the way, I'm going to be putting in my two weeks because this company is going to let me actually do the work I'm capable of doing. 
and is going to pay me better. I hope that M and R are able to, you know, hold up all the stuff that I was doing. And they won't. They clearly aren't capable of doing everything you are. You're being taken advantage of. Don't let them get away with it, if at all possible. Story 2. I stood up against someone causing my parents' business under review bombing. My parents have owned a small Chinese restaurant for the past 25 years. Recently, I spent a day working there as a waiter, and a big party of 11 people came in with their children. Their children were pretty rowdy and running around the top of our benches. I politely asked the parents to calm their children down as they were causing a disturbance and could hurt themselves. The parents made a half-hearted attempt to calm them down, but the children returned to running around on the benches. Unfortunately, one of their kids fell and hit his head. The child was stunned, holding his head, and looking like he was in massive pain. Others came to his care as well as his mother, but the father told his child to get over it and to suck it up when the child started crying, all while he attempted to rush out the door. He didn't even try to look after his kid when he got hurt. I watched all of this silently until the father was pushing his kid to get out of the restaurant. At that point, I had enough and told the father he could try being more empathetic to his child. He told me to mind my own business, and I continued to repeat how his child had just hurt himself and that he needed attention rather than neglect. The father just kept repeating, mind your own business, as his friends and family were holding him back from approaching me. I was behind the front counter the whole time. I spoke sternly and never swore. I tried to be as professional as I could while trying to make my point. Now they're review bombing my parents' restaurant and I can't, can't help but think it was all my fault. I've tried responding to the business with context, but they keep deleting their review whenever I respond and they keep writing new ones saying that I deleted their reviews. Is there anything I can do to prevent review bombing? I don't want my parents to suffer because of my actions. Thank you for any responses. Uh, I mean, the best thing that I can suggest that you do is just take down evidence of their reviews. You know, take screenshots, stuff like that. Take screenshots of your responses. Put it up on social media. TikTok eats that stuff up. They love to find jerks like this and try and just wash away the crap that they're doing and maybe give your restaurant some good press or whatever. Honestly, I think that's the best thing you can do in this day and age because when every single person can leave reviews and just be a complete a-hole, that's what's going to happen. Now, I will say as far as like, should you have spoken up and kept telling the guy to quit neglecting his kid? Yeah, I think so. Like his kid was actually hurt and the dad was being a jerk. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I think some people say like, oh, well, you probably should mind your own business. You're not the parent. But I don't know. When a kid actually gets hurt and a parent is just like, suck it up. I want that parent to suck on a rock. Story one. Am I the a-hole for outshining the bride? So I, 27 female, am a black African woman. I'm living and working in Germany for a fixed period on second men. While here, I became quite friendly with a colleague, 60 female, and she invited me to her daughter's wedding. I was excited, as I'd never been to a white wedding. I asked if there was a dress code slash color scheme to adhere to since it wasn't specified on the invite. I was told the code is dress to impress. Bet. Day of the wedding, I understood the assignment. I wear my traditional clothing, which is beautiful and not German. The garment is green, so no problem there. Or so I thought. I get a lot of questions and compliments at the wedding, which I genuinely downplay because it's not my day. My colleague seems colder than usual, but I get no mind since she's the mother of the bride and could be preoccupied. The bride is downright rude to me, but again, I give her grace. I congratulate her and thank her for including me, and I get a tight face in response. I keep to the edges of the room, as the music isn't my vibe, and I'm just observing how European weddings work. I leave around 8 after 5 hours and go home before the wedding finishes. Monday, I walk into whispers in the office. People were strangely and more reserved than usual. An office friend pulls me aside and fills me in. The bride's mother is fuming. My outfit was too extravagant and inappropriate. I drew attention from the bride and commandeered the room. I was rude and disrespectful. She told people all about it. I approached the mother of the bride and asked to speak, but she says she has nothing to say to me. I ask her why she has to tell everyone else about me, but not to me, and she calls me an insolent child. I explain to anyone who scolds me that this was my first white people wedding. I specifically asked what to wear and follow the guidelines. Where I'm from, there's no such thing as outshining the bride. Weddings are a fashion show and a chance to wear your best and brightest clothes. 
They told me this isn't Africa, which was racially coded, and people here have manners. I laughed and told that person to go to hell, so she's telling people I lack remorse for my behavior. I'm wondering if I'm the a-hole, though. Ah, gee, I wonder, are you the a-hole who took the words of a person that told you to dress to impress, and you did just that, and were polite and downplayed stuff, and genuinely acted like a good person in every way you thought, or is the old racist lady the a-hole? I wonder who the a-hole is in this situation. Yeah, it's definitely her! What an absolute... Oh, I have so many bad words for that. Just, what? Just gross! Like, I'm sorry, if you think that there's going to be cultural divides or whatever, you know, then you try and, like, bring that up. Like, well, dress to impress, but you don't want to do this or this in German weddings or whatever. Like, you have to know that different cultures are going to approach weddings differently. And so, if you thought that something that, you know, she might misunderstand, you need to clarify. That's on you, racist old lady. But also, I wouldn't expect you to, because eat dirt. Story 2. Ended my relationship with my boyfriend over things he did as a teen. Here is my story, which happened some years ago. I, 26 female at the time, had just started dating Thomas, 28 male, and things seemed promising. Very sweet man, educated and quite smart, good looks. After seven weeks of dating, he invited me and two of his childhood friends, let's call them Alex and Bart, for a long 29th birthday celebration weekend at his father's country house in a small French town. His father was going to be around as well, and I was very excited to meet everyone. Day one, Friday, is fun and I'm happy to get along well with Thomas's father and a smart and caring man. Day two, Saturday. After a very nice day, we enjoyed a party in the garden with the neighbors, including some friends of Thomas. After a few hours and lots of drinks, a group of people gathered around a small campfire and started sharing childhood memories. This is where things go wrong. At first, of course, innocent and dumb stories, as you would expect, but then Thomas and his friends started sharing sick stuff. In particular, they told a story about how when they were 14 or 15 years old, they found it very amusing to bully for almost six months Arthur, a boy from their school who was very isolated and shy, making jokes, calling names, you name it. As if this was not enough, they created a fake girl profile on MSN Messenger, a computer platform to exchange live messages that we used in years in the 2000s, and spent effing months exchanging messages with him under the false girl identity, flirting and developing a false relationship with the poor boy. Some people were confident at school, and it became a big and cruel joke behind Arthur's back. They used pictures of Bart's real cousin, and the boy truly thought he had some kind of online girlfriend to whom he even sent confessions and love messages. At some point, they got bored and scheduled a false rendezvous in real life, asking the boy to take a bus for two or three hours wearing a t-shirt, Elmer the Elephant, based on a private joke. There was no one waiting for him, and they did not know how long he waited over there by himself. If Arthur had not already understood what was going on, he found out the next day at school after Thomas and Bart told the story to everyone and even shared the love messages that Arthur had been writing. The poor boy stopped coming to class and changed school, and it's easy to imagine that this must have been extremely traumatizing to him. Do you think that Thomas, Alex, and Bart had any bit of shame about it? Not a bit of remorse, in particular on Thomas and Bart's side. They kept making jokes about it and even seemed to regret that they were not good enough to be evil to convince the boy to send nudes or intimate pics. I don't even want to imagine what would have happened if he had done so. To say I felt uncomfortable would be a gross understatement. I was horrified and started to despise Thomas more than anything. I was not the only one shocked. Thomas's father, who heard the end of the story, had the most disappointed look in his eyes. His stupid son was so drunk that he did not even notice it. I escaped the party immediately after that and got back to the house. I could not sleep at all that night, and I kept thinking about the evening and how Thomas was still finding this funny. I heard him coming to bed around 4 a.m., but I pretended I was asleep. Day 3, Sunday, was the actual birthday, and the initial plan was that I would take Thomas on a one-to-one -one fancy surprise date for lunch nearby, and then we would meet the group for a late afternoon party. Instead, I woke up very early on Sunday morning, took all my stuff in silence, and went alone to the train station where I took a direct train heading back to Paris. I decided to send a text to Thomas wishing him a happy birthday and telling him to meet me at a certain location one hour from the house for a surprise, and that I needed to go a little bit in advance to make sure that everything would be perfect. I had picked the location randomly using Google Maps to gain time. 
Thomas read the text around 10 a.m. when he woke up. He responded with excitement that he would follow the instructions religiously. When he arrived there at 12.30, I told him to wait further as there was a little delay on something. Then I asked him to meet me at a restaurant that was 30 minutes drive from the initial location. When he arrived at 13.15, I texted him that I was on my way. I would arrive in 20 minutes and that he would understand when he saw me why I made him wait. I also asked him to order some food and the most expensive bottle on the menu. Around 13.30, he started calling me several times and sent a lot of worried texts. And after 45 minutes, I responded in French, So how does it feel to have people play with your feelings? Then I stopped responding. I let him call and text the entire afternoon, but never responded. At some point, an unknown number called me. It was his friend Alex asking what was going on and that Thomas's birthday was completely ruined because of what I did. I just responded, This is an extremely small payback for what you did to Arthur. Tell Thomas to stop calling me and hung up. I blocked them. I still felt bad the entire evening as I had started to grow attached to Thomas back then. In the following days, a common friend called me to say that my reaction was completely absurd and unfair, that it was not my role to punish someone for actions they did as a teenager, that they were adults' ways of saying things, and that I had been completely crazy. Only a few people supported what I did, everyone else seemed to think I was a bee. Thomas tried to fix things and win me back for a few months afterward. I never responded to any of his messages. I don't regret it. I simply hope that Arthur, who should be 35 or 36 years old now, is well. I support you. I absolutely support this. I maybe wouldn't have if he had, like, relayed these stories and seemed kind of indifferent about it. Like, maybe not regretting it. But it was the fact that he was, like, reveling in telling these stories. And none of you get to say, like, oh, but he was drunk. Nope, nope, I'm sorry. That's just too telling and too revealing. And, you know, what she did, it was... One day, ruined his one little birthday thing, but it was a one day thing. They tormented that Arthur kid for months, six months. That's really twisted. And as an adult, he should have had the, the hindsight to look back at that and be like, I can't believe I did that. Like, if he had regretted it, that would be one thing. Some people can be bullies in like junior high and high school and kind of realize just how bad that was, make amends, and become better people. I fully believe that's possible. But when you're 28, and you're still reveling about how you tortured a kid so bad that he had to transfer schools, that really says something about you as a person. And frankly, I think that this little bit of revenge, just like ruining his birthday a bit and making him wait there and all that kind of stuff, I think that is some pretty minor revenge in the grand scheme of things. So fully supported. Story 1. Am I the a-hole for not giving my own meal after treating my girlfriend to dinner? My girlfriend, 25 female, and I, 29 male, live in New York City, and there's a popular app where you buy leftover restaurant food. Restaurants advertise surprise bags at a reduced price in order to reduce food waste. The customer doesn't know what they're getting until they pick the food up, but the cost is at least three times lower than the normal menu price. E.g., if an entree is usually $24, the restaurant is allowed to charge $8 at most for it. These are hit or miss. Sometimes you get exactly what you want at a greatly reduced price, but sometimes you get something that you otherwise wouldn't have picked from the menu. I ordered a surprise bag from a barbecue place that I was picking up on the way home yesterday. I texted my girlfriend asking if she wanted one, but she said no, she wasn't in the mood for barbecue. However, there was an Indian restaurant right next door that also had surprise bags available on the app, so she ordered one of them. The barbecue was $12, and the Indian food was $10. When I got home, I unpacked the meals to see what we got. I was psyched about my bag. Since I paid $12, I knew the value had to be at least $36, but honestly, the platter looked a lot more expensive. This was a hit. Keep in mind that we live in the West Village, which is the most expensive neighborhood and the most expensive city in the U.S., so $36 for one meal is pretty typical. They were, there were burnt ends, ribs, pulled pork, baked beans, potato salad, bread, onions, and pickles. My girlfriend, however, was less lucky. Her surprise bag only had six different types of soup, half of them being variations on cauliflower soup. She was disappointed, to say the least. She asked if we should share my barbecue, and I said, no, I'm hungry. I offered to buy you some already, and you said no, so I'm going to devour it. She got mad and called me the a-hole. I told her if she didn't want soup, she should have ordered something specifically instead of using the surprise bag app. I then told her to just order something off a fo food delivery app. She said she didn't want to spend the money. Another bit of context is I make a lot more money than her and pay all of our rent. 
I know she's running a bit of a lean financial picture right now. I then tell her that if she doesn't want to pay for delivery, I'll walk to the bodega on our street and can buy her something there. Another bit of context is that we live on a fourth floor walk-up with no elevator and she broke her leg in a car accident a month ago, so it can be tough for her to get around. She says the grill is probably off there and all she wants is a hot meal. I tell her she has soup. Anyway, she thinks I'm the a-hole, but in my defense, one, I offered to buy her barbecue to begin with, which she declined, two, she picked out her own food and I grabbed it for her on my way home, three, she wasn't satisfied. I suggested two solutions, either ordering something from an app or going to a bodega. Am I the a-hole? You got a lot of food, you can't share it? I mean, I don't think you're an a-hole if you don't want to share, I guess, I don't know, but I really don't see the issue here. Like, it could be my favorite thing in the world, which I'm gonna say right now, is a sub from my hometown, which I'm going to be at tomorrow, and I'm gonna get multiple of them and bring them home. I'm so excited. I can't tell you how much I love these subs, especially now that I live like three and a half, four hours away from that hometown and I cannot get them. I love these subs so much. And if I was like coming back home from up here and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get one of these subs, I should call my partner and see if she wants one. And she was like, no, nah, I don't think so. And I got home with it. And then she smelled it and knew what she was missing out on. She's like, oh my God, that does smell so good. And she was like, could I have some of that? I would cut that bad boy down the middle and give her half of it because I love her. And I know like, yeah, at the moment she didn't think she wanted it, but then it's like, oh man, now I actually see what I'm missing out on. Oh, it sounds so good. Could I please? Of course I will. Would I have to? No. Do I think you're an a-hole for not doing it? Not necessarily but I really genuinely don't understand why you wouldn't share a big bountiful meal like that. And then you can have some cauliflower soup. That stuff isn't bad either. Come on, get your veggies. Story two. Today I effed up by absolutely destroying a girl's face. This story happened a while ago when I was a teenager. I read another today I effed up story that reminds me of this tragedy. My church used to have a retreat designed for kids and teenagers where we spent about three days in a camp. During those three days, the staff organized mostly fun activities because we're kids and Bible studying, which was fun as well. Uh, the camp has a gymnasium where we do most of our physical activities. One of these activities is similar to musical chairs where the participants sat on a round table with wooden sticks in the middle. The amount of sticks is equal to the number of participants minus one. Then all of us are dealt four cards with one person drawing cards from the remainder of the deck. If the person wants the card, they swap the card with one from their hand and pass the swapped card to the next person clockwise, if not just discard it to the next person. Whoever collects four of a kind first can grab one of the sticks in the middle and the table and the rest follows. Whoever didn't have a stick in their hand will receive one point. Also if any participants touch the stick without having four of a kind, they receive one point. Once someone gets four points, they are out of the table. As you can visualize, the game can get very intense. I was participating in one game and after a few rounds, things were starting to get intense. Once everybody was comfortable with the pace of the game, I began to move super fast. Cards were flying here and there and no one wanted to wait for someone to bend down or reach over to grab the discarded cards. A few even fake reached to trap other participants to lose the game. It was chaos and everyone was laughing, but super tense. During this chaotic moment, I noticed that someone grabbed the first stick and I followed suit. I instantly reached for the nearest stick, grabbed it, and yanked. Without knowing, I didn't realize that there was a girl across from where I was sitting who also grabbed the end of the stick. My reaction was too fast, and I couldn't stop. When I yanked, I pulled the girl so hard toward me, knocked her in the abdomen, jerked her torso forward, and slammed her face right on the table. The room gasped with shock, and I instantly dropped my stick, realizing what I had done. Everyone's mouth was agape as she sat back up with her forehead bruised, her nose was bleeding, and she was crying so hard. Worst of all, she was about five years younger than me. One of the chaperones immediately grabbed the first aid kit and tended to her wound. Fortunately, the nosebleed was shallow and there were no broken bones. The chaperone who helped her was a nurse. I apologized profusely, and even though it was a knee-jerk reaction, I let my adrenaline get the better of me. Everyone stopped playing afterward, and I kind of ruined the mood. After I made sure that she was well-treated and okay, I just spent the rest of the night in the room not wanting to come out in shame as I just absolutely destroyed a poor little girl's face.
I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even put the blame on you. You're like a young little teenager or a kid or whatever. Your kid's doing this. The chaperones should have seen how wild all the kids are getting, just like, you know, going crazy. And they should have been like, this is a bad idea. We should maybe tell them to calm down. We have let this situation run amok. And it did, and bad things happen. And yeah, I mean, you can feel a little bit bad or whatever, but ah, you're a kid, you're a teen, things happen. And I'm sure she was fine after that. I hope she was fine after that. But no, really, this kind of lands on the chaperone. Like, I'm sorry, you know, if chaperones just like dump rocks on the floor and they go, hey kids, just throw some rocks around. That'll keep you entertained. And a kid gets hit with a rock. It ain't the kid's fault. That's the chaperones. Story one. Am I the a-hole for apparently neglecting my girlfriend and making her delete my account? All right, I've got a story for you, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on whether I'm in the wrong. So, I'm an 18 male who's really into gaming. It's one of my major passions, and sometimes I can get pretty immersed in it. Recently, I started dating this amazing girl. Let's call her Sarah. We hit it off, and everything seemed great. However, after the CS2 update, I've got about 3,000 hours on it, I was spending a lot more time gaming than usual. Now, I'll admit, I kind of stopped going out that often. We usually spent most weekends together. And in my defense, I was just excited for the update since I've literally played this game since I was 14. I guess Sarah reached her breaking point, because one day she decided to delete my account. I have the same password for all my accounts, and she knows it. I effing exploded. I had spent quite some money on it and had some pretty rare skins, not to mention all the games I had bought. I'm honestly shocked I didn't throw hands. I told her to get out and that I never wanted to see her again. I think she waited for me to cool down because a few hours later she tried setting up a meeting through my mom. I decided to confront her about it and things got pretty heated. We argued back and forth, her saying that me gaming made her feel like she wasn't a priority and that she even tried talking to me about it. I had told her that I just wanted a few weekends off to play my childhood game, but I guess she couldn't take it. The worst part of all is that my mom took her side. I just left and took a long walk. I was so mad I didn't even know what to do. Now I'm left wondering if I'm the one to blame for this situation. Did I push her to that point? Should I have been more attentive, or was her action an overreaction to my behavior? <sighs> Really gonna make me defend a Counter-Strike 2 player. No, it's fine if you like that game. I, 3,000 hours. I, I don't think I've ever done anything in my life for 3,000 hours. I, I just can't. Now, I feel like maybe you weren't super attentive. Maybe you, maybe you do game too much. I don't know. I, I can't tell. I only have your perspective. I will say, yeah, she's in the wrong if she's just gonna go into your account and delete it. Like, if she really has a problem, she could just say, like, you know what? I don't really want to hang out until you kind of, like, figure out a balance between me and a video game or something. Like, she had many other options that weren't just delete something that you like and then be like, like, you're not paying attention to me. Like, that's not a great way to go about things. So I'm definitely not on her side. I don't know if you made all the right decisions poster, but you didn't deserve that to happen to you. So I don't know. Take that for what you will. But yeah, maybe encourage... Better communication. Story 2. My, 50 male, wife, 48 female, abandoned me two months ago to find herself. My wife Mary's family has a history of dementia, developing memory issues in their late, mid to late 50s. Her mom, grandmother, and several other relatives on her mom's side have developed dementia. Her mom lived with us for four years until earlier this year, father is dead. Our kids are independent and out of the house. Oldest is in her last semester of college, and the younger enlisted. The last four years were tough on us. Our kids, daughter moved for college but moved back for a bit during COVID, and our marriage. Living with someone with dementia is brutal. We had talked a lot last year about taking the remaining college funds, our regular savings, sell or rent the house, we were ready to downsize anyway, quit our jobs and travel for a year or until the money runs out. We just had to wait for her mom to move into a home. I understand her anxiety about developing dementia, and I was burned out. You live through COVID working remote, a wife working remote, a college and high school student taking remote classes, and a mother-in-law with dementia, and see how you hold up. Space finally opened up and we were able to move her mom into a care facility. I finally thought I had a chance to breathe. When we moved Mary's mom out, Mary's mental health took a huge downward spiral. I went from caring for her mom to caring for her. She felt guilty about putting her mom in a home and had lots of anxiety about developing dementia. Our plan was to start our traveling summer 2024. 
Two months ago, I got home, and she left a note. My friends call it Exhibit A. Basically, she was going on our trip without me. She had quit her job, took most of the savings, and wasn't sure when she'd be back. Maybe a year, maybe sooner. She knew I'd understand. Her location is turned off, and my calls go direct to voicemail. I texted the kids a picture of the note. We have our own checking accounts for direct deposits of our paychecks, but we transfer most into a joint account to pay the household bills and savings. We both had access to the main savings account. We have joint credit cards we used for household expenses. The two cars and mortgage are joint. We both also have our own small savings accounts, our own retirement accounts, equally funded, and our own credit cards for gifts and fun things. I closed all joint cards and accounts. I waited a month to see if she'd come back, hopefully before she spent our savings. After receiving only one text the first month, I went to a lawyer. She basically said there was very little to do right now other than change the beneficiaries of my retirement account and life insurance. Yay, my wife gets nothing if I die alone while she's having our adventures. It was only a month and there was no way to serve her papers. My lawyer advised me to keep paying the mortgage and the cars. The cost of trying to get a judge to approve the sale of joint assets was more than making payments. I didn't want to ruin my credit by letting one of our cars get repossessed, but I can't sell it because she's on the title. I get random texts and she sporadically posts on Instagram. Of course, she has comments turned off. I want to block her so badly, but my lawyer advised me that it's better to maintain a communication channel that's not through our kids. The last post was from Hawaii. She put in the comments how great a husband I was for letting her take this trip. I'm barely making it, paying two cars, a mortgage, household bills, insurance, hoping there are no emergencies because I have no savings, and she's enjoying our trip. F her. I'm so peed at her. I helped take care of her mom for four years, and when she fell apart after her mom moved into a memory care home, she returned the favor by abandoning me. I'll never get to take this trip and have to put off retirement. My only solace is the kids are peed at her, but they'll probably forgive her eventually. Double F her. I'm no fool. She's hooking up with guys. She looks good. She'll have zero problems getting men. I texted her and asked if she was sleeping around. A week later, she responded that she wasn't. Sure. So I'm drinking alone on Friday night, and she's somewhere, probably on a beach, enjoying life. Triple F her. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what her life has been like or how your relationship has been, but there's absolutely... I, I can't think of any good justification for her doing that to this poster. Like, this is awful. The fact that she's also, like, she's like, what a great husband I have letting me do this, when you didn't even talk to him about it. You didn't have a conversation. You just left and said, hey, I'm doing this. Bye-bye. I hope you, I know you'll understand. Like, that's awful. Like, and to put all this extra stress on him as if you're the only one going through stress, like, Oh, he'll understand because I've been going through stress and I'm worried about dementia. And granted, that would terrify me. I worked very well. I did. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but for training as a CNA, I worked in the dementia and Alzheimer's ward for a week. It's extremely tough. And I like my heart goes out to people dealing with that. It is rough. And so I get her being concerned about that. But for her to be so concerned about that over the fact that also, it's also been a really tough year for her whole family, especially her husband, taking care of that. And now it's going to get so much worse because he doesn't get the trip you had been planning together. And now he's like struggling to get by financially and all this stuff. Like, what an awful thing to do. Like, even if she eventually comes back like, oh, thanks so much for letting me do that. My response would be, I didn't let you. You just did it and took money from me and stuff. We're getting a divorce. Like, I would, I don't think I could recover from something like that. That's extremely selfish of her. Story one. Would I be the a-hole if I leave my husband's affair baby with my mother-in-law while the rest of us go on vacation? My, 38 female, husband, 48 male, has a child from an affair he had a couple years ago. I forgave my husband, but I cannot force myself to see his son as my stepson. The custody arrangement is that my husband has him every other week. Christmas and most Christmas vacation this year falls on the days that he has him. I have an annual trip that me and a few other housewives put together for all of the families. His ex-mistress Leah is refusing to take him for just this week. I told her she's being selfish and that she should want to spend Christmas with her son. She said that so should my husband. My husband agreed with me, so we decided we would drop him and his presents off to my mother-in-law. 
When Leia found out, she was furious and she said, I'm being selfish. I told her she's the last one to be talking about being selfish and she has so much control over what my husband does with the child during the time he has custody of him. My oldest daughter, 18 female, told me she agrees with Leia and that there's no reason why he's being punished for their affair. I told her to stay in a child's place and that if she keeps this up, she'll be joining him. Wow, so I was just like a little bit sympathetic to you, sort of, in the beginning, but in the end, telling your 18-year-old daughter to like stay in, stay in a child's place, you know, or else you're gonna join him, like... No, someone voices their opinion and you're, she's 18 and you're acting like that? No. Also, to say like, I, your husband is trying to be a father to this child and you're like, yeah, fine, but he's not my stepson. That, it's not the kid's fault. And it, I mean, is it? I don't know if technically it is because it's not from another marriage. I don't know exactly how that works, but still, that, uh, that seems just a little bit cold. And that's your prerogative. You do whatever you want, but... No, I, I, eh. Like, if you knew ahead of time that your husband was going to have him for these this week or whatever, you should have kind of planned around that a bit. It's not the kid's fault, so I don't know. I don't know if you're an a-hole or not, but you're not the nicest either. Story 2. Am I the a-hole for doing weird, awkward poses whenever my mother-in-law accidentally walks in on me in the bathroom? So, my mother-in-law, I'm a gal by the way, lol, came to stay with us for a few weeks till her home is renovated for Christmas. The problem is that she's been randomly walking in on me while I'm in the bathroom. Thankfully, not once has she seen me naked because I started picking up on her behavior after the second time in a week. She barges in, then turns and says, oh, sorry, then closes the door. I try talking to my husband about it, but he keeps ignoring me, then flat out said, so what if she accidentally saw you naked? She's family! He seriously said that. We have a lock, and I could have used it, but I have put past trauma from the idea of locking slash being locked in a room after my brother locked me in the bathroom when I was five. So, I came up with this idea. I'd go inside the bathroom pretending to use it and wait for her to come, because honestly, it's deliberate at this point. When she accidentally barges in, she sees me in a weird, awkward position. For example, doing a ballet stand, standing on the toilet, or standing facing the wall with my hands up. Fully clothed, of course. I could see how awkward and weird this would be for her because she's stand there for a few seconds trying to figure out what I was doing. It was hilarious at first, seeing her initial confusion, but she told my husband about it, claiming she caught me practicing rituals in the bathroom. I cleared things up and revealed the reason why. My husband was livid. He called me childish and said that I made his mom feel terrified and weirded out by my behavior. He said I should have acted maturely and locked the damn door instead of playing mind games. No, mama's boy, you should have acted mature and talked to your mother about her being, like, about her having, like, no respect for someone's privacy in the bathroom. Don't be like, so what? She's family. No, you stand up to your mom. Actually talk to her. Quit being a little like, but my mommy. Like, no, and don't get mad when what she's doing is innocent. She's taking goofy poses and your mom's like, Satan! Like, that's not on this person. That's on your mom. Like, seriously, mom's being weird. That's weird. If it's a bathroom and the door is closed, and most bathrooms you can see some light coming through even, like, but whatever. Still, don't just walk into bathrooms, especially when it's not your house. Like, if you close the bathroom when it's not in use in your house so you're just used to that? Fine, you're somewhere else. Have a little bit of, like, decency and be polite. Like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> this mom and her goober of a son need to chill out and stop it. Story 3. Got a restraining order approved for my next door neighbor yesterday. Now his car alarm is blaring every couple hours. Is this violating the order? My husband and I got a restraining order approved against our next door neighbor yesterday. He was harassing us and threatening us to make things really, really bad after his property sustained damage from a downed tree limb on the border of our property. He did not take the news of the approved order well in court, showed up to contest, and was nearly held in contempt of court for backtalk. Now, 30 hours after the restraining order is in place, He's standing in his kitchen window with his keys, pushing the car alarm for his vehicle over and over again. He did it from 9 to 9.45 p.m. and again at 12.30 a.m., God knows when, thank the Lord for sound machines, and was still doing it at 5.50 a.m. when I woke up. 
now 6.30ish. I have all of this on video as his kitchen window faces our home. We are a one-way recording consent state. You can clearly see him in the kitchen window at 9 and 12.30, but not at 5.50. He's woken up my two-year-old several times already. I'm eight months pregnant and do not need this dress. He clearly is not taking the order seriously, and I'm freaked. He's also a well-known volatile alcoholic. Does this count as harassment? I mean, first, you have recording in proof, so good on you there. And second, whether or not it's violating a restraining order, I have no idea. But most cities have, like, you know, noise ordinances and stuff like that. And if he is willfully activating the alarm on his car throughout the night, well past the hours, you know, where there are noise ordinances, I think most cities say, like, you shouldn't be making really loud noises after 9 or 10 or something like that, then yeah, you could just get him called on that stuff and have him paying some fines or whatever. Or, I don't know, pray to Zeus that he strikes his house with lightning because this sounds like a real butthole. I don't like him. God, what a childish dink. Story 1. Significant other's family gave away my vacation. My significant other of five years and his family plus myself were set up to go on a cruise. Significant other helped book the tickets, flight, etc., and I paid them back, almost $1,000. Well, come weeks before said vacation, significant other and I break up. We share a lease until a few months after, so I stay. Things were neutral for a while, and we still cared for one another, went out to eat, etc., but a week before, we got in a fight, and I left to go home because they blew up on me, and I was feeling uneasy. Home is several states away. I spent some time with my family, six days, get ready for the vacation, and decompress. Significant other stays in contact we, with me during this time, asking me to come back and whatnot. We exchange amicable texts and a few calls, but I never slip. I'm coming home to be with them again and give it another go. Two days before the cruise, I came back to our apartment and significant other asked why. I said, for my vacation I paid for. Significant other explains that while I was gone, they gave away my tickets two days prior. I'm upset, but significant other says they can't just change it again since it's too late. His family tells me it's my fault for being melodramatic and that I moved away and should have told them I was coming back. I argued I wasn't aware they were involved in our fight. They tell me this is the consequences of my actions, and I learned a lesson. They gave the ticket to a younger cousin, 18 male, and canceled my flight. I calm down and ask when I'll be getting my money back. Family says there's no money to give back as the trip was non-refundable about a month ago. They say, sorry, but again, tell me I should have been the adult and contacted them. I'm conflicted and significant other and I talked, but I'm still jaded about my trip. Significant other and family still go, significant other canceled at first, but I urge them to go anyway so they don't also lose the money. I just want my money someone else is using to go on vacation with. I want to take the family to small claims court, particularly the person managing the cruise tickets who changed mine without my consent. I don't know if I have a case, though. I feel dumb and hurt. My family keeps telling me I'm being used and am too nice. That's why they push over me. They also want me to move back permanently since this shows how much they don't care for me, as none of them contacted me to check up on me before making that decision. I don't know. Can someone help me? Look, I get that, you know, yeah, the, the ticket wasn't, like, refundable or whatever, but they can't just give away your ticket that you paid them money for because you had a fight and you weren't present. They need to actually, like, talk with you and be like, look, uh, if you're gonna be gone, we need to do something with your ticket. The money's not refundable. We're gonna give it away. And if they are gonna give it away, they need to pay you back for it. Maybe not the whole amount because of inconvenience. I don't know, but Everything I'm hearing tells me, yeah, take them to small claims court, because it sounds like they kind of suck. It's not, this is the kind of crap that makes breakups even worse, is like, you were trying to be amicable, you still had a fight because you're living together, because that couldn't have been easy, but that doesn't give them a right to just, you know, give away something that is yours without talking to you first. So yeah, take them to small claims court, get some money out of them, I don't know, give them the finger. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.